everyone, this is day 11 of 30 days of courses and today's topic tells me to post a picture of my favorite historical style of corset. And actually I'm really glad that they said historical style and not just historical corset or antique corset because it gives me a little bit more leeway to talk about some of my favorite uh, historical uh, reproduction uh, corseteers. So the last time I answered this question, uh, almost six years ago in 2013, I chose uh, the vintage demi bust made in, I believe it was 1891 in France by Maison Léodie, which I think is on display at the Met Museum, or at least it was at the time that I had made that video back in 2013. But I, I still love a certain elements about this corset, like uh, the delicate floral brocade, the incredible spiral motif matching, uh, the pristine stitch work, the clean gussets, the lace that curves smoothly over the, the curve of the bust, and it matches sort of that delicate off-white of the silk. Although, you know, granted, both the lace and the silk have probably gone yellow due to age over time. <laughs> but it's still an exceptionally beautiful corset that would be a shame to be hidden at all times. But I do want to take this opportunity to talk about some of my favorite uh, corseteers who do historical reproduction work. So most of my viewers are probably already familiar with Prior Attire or have probably seen some of her videos here on YouTube. Uh, the owner, Isabella, has also contributed to my book Solist, where she wrote about um, some of her historical courses helping her with her costochondritis. So uh, if you have not read my book, I will put the link up in the cards and in the description down below. If I had to play favorites in this episode, I would say that Red Threaded from Colorado is probably the corset maker I follow the most closely. Uh, but Cynthia, she makes corsets that are very simple for those who want or need uh, foundation wear under historically accurate costumes. But she also makes um, some base corsets for some very famous designers, which I'm not sure if I'm even like allowed to say it on video or anything. But basically these hotshot designers, um, when they're doing like their collections and the runway work, they will buy base courses from her and then like embellish them. But also, Cynthia makes these amazing decorative one-off uh, corset samples every once in a while. Um, some of them are based in antique patterns, some of them are more modernized patterns, um, some of them are extremely elegant and others are like kind of avant-garde. Um, but obviously, you know, it allows her uh, some artistic license. Of course, I cannot mention uh, historical reproduction work without mentioning Lace and Brace Atelier uh, from here in Canada. So the owner, Melanie Talkington, has been in the business for decades now and she's able to do it all, including historical corsets, uh, costume design for movies, modern corsets. Uh, she has ready-to-wear lines for people who uh, don't want to wait or they can't quite invest in a custom corset uh, quite at this moment. I think she did costumes and corsets for Once Upon a Time and I know that she worked on the Sucker Punch movie, uh, but probably the corsets that she's most famous for, or the, the most recognizable of hers, are the corsets that she made for Kathy Young, which as most of you probably know, is the 82 year old um, Guinness World Record holder for the smallest waist on a living person. 15 inches, that corset really amazing. And who else can I talk about? Uh, there's obviously period corsets based in Washington. Actually, period corsets was probably my first proper introduction to uh, historical reproduction corsetry. And they do have their sort of bare bones line, uh, their simple line for foundation wear. Uh, and what's really nice is that they separate all their corsets into uh, the different centuries and the decades and, and they tell you what era each style is appropriate for. And they go uh, all the way from like, I think like 16 and 1700s, all the way up to the 1950s with like bullet bra corselets. They also have a separate line if you want some more, I guess, modern wear. Uh, so they have a bridal line, I think called Palantine Bridal, specifically for plus size brides. So their work is beautiful. There's also Clockwork Fairy based out of Colorado. Uh, they have a really beautiful corded demi bust, which is absolutely drool worthy. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm waiting for the day that I can save up for one of those because it, it really is um, a special piece. So if you're interested in historical corsetry, you can check out those corset makers. Or if you're interested in making your own corsets from an antique pattern, um, I mean, there are different books that you can get antique patterns from, like Jill Salin's book and also uh, Corsets and Crinoline 
Crinolines from Nora Waugh. But the issue that you can run across when you're taking patterns from um, historical text and you know books like that is that um, the, the patterns might not always be tested and the seams might not be trued and the, the pieces might not fit together quite so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description to Atelier Sylph's um, Etsy store because Atelier Sylph, what they do is they take those antique patterns, they test them, they make mock-ups and samples out of them, and they adjust the seams, and they, they true everything, and they make sure that it, it all fits together as it should, and that it gives you the historically accurate silhouette and fit and whatnot. And then they post those patterns on Etsy. And one of the amazing things about them is uh, they allow you to use the pattern for both personal use and commercial use. So if you're a corset maker and you want to sell the corsets you make from these patterns, they allow you to do that. Not everybody allows you to do that with their corset patterns. So all of the people that I mentioned in this video, I will put links in the description down below, so be sure to check those out. And if you want to check out some more historical reproduction courses, I have galleries on my website. So uh, you can check out the Pre-Victorian Stays Gallery, the uh, Edwardian S-Bend Corset Gallery, the Titanic Slim Hip Corset Gallery. I have a few there. Those resources have been there for years, and I do update them like maybe a couple of times a year. If you click on any of those videos, it will redirect you to that Corset Maker's website where you can learn more about them. And all of this is free for both the corset maker and anybody visiting my website looking for more information. So actually, if you are a corset maker who does historical reproduction courses and you want your uh, courses added to any of these galleries, then leave a comment down below or uh, send me an email and I can have your stuff added to my website. So um, that's all for day 11 of 30 Days of Corsets. Thank you all so much for watching to the end and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!